What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kevin Jackwitz, this is The Cage Review, and this is going to be a review for WWE Fastlane, the go-home pay-per-view to Wrestlemania. Kind of a mixed bag for me, I'm going to be honest. You start out with uh, New Day, uh, Xavier Woods and Big E taking on Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura for the pre-show. Uh, it was the only match during the pre-show, they had a couple of bits that really didn't amount to anything. Um... And the match itself was okay. I don't know that it really got people invested in the pay-per-view. I don't know that it really did anything for anything. I think originally it was supposed to be a different match altogether. Um, as a matter of fact, it was. I, I recall it being Rey Mysterio and Andrade Cien Almas was supposed to open up, I think. Um, but either way, that's what we got. And uh, I don't know that it set the tone for anything. So your first match of Fastlane is The Miz and Shane McMahon taking on The Usos. Now I was kind of wondering if they were going to take the belts off The Usos because of all the trouble that I think it was Jimmy was having. And uh, so, you know, it, it was kind of like an expected thing for me. And uh, the match itself, it was alright. Um, I don't know that anything really, really stood out, but, you know, it was good. It caught your eye. Get, um, Kind of got the blood pumping, so to speak. Um, the Usos pick up the win. And the big story with this match wasn't the match itself, but it was Shane McMahon turning heel and wiping out The Miz after the match. And that really caught me off guard. And I think it caught a lot of people off guard because they were, you know, rumors going around about The Miz and Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. And, of course, I think personally everybody was thinking The Miz was going to be the one to turn heel. Um... And so they're in his hometown, they lose, you know, there was a bunch of pauses outside the ring and you knew something was going to happen. And I had it in my mind that The Miz was going to go clock Shane McMahon, well it turned out to be the other way around, so that was kind of a cool turnaround, honestly. Uh, and to happen in Miz's hometown, you know Shane's going to get booed because, you know, Miz's hometown. So, it was kind of cool, it was a smart way to do it, and I did like the fact that they did that. After that, you get a backstage interview with Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin. Uh, really amounts to nothing. Uh, Corbin and Lashley are not very good at the mic. And uh, McIntyre, I, I really like him, but he could still use some more personality, some more promo work. Um, so that promo didn't do much for me. Then you get Mandy Rose with Sonya Deville versus Asuka. Um... And this is exactly what you would expect it to be. Sonya Deville doing a lot of outside interference and Asuka having to defeat the odds. And of course, she's going to come out on top. No big surprise there. You know they're going to have Asuka at WrestleMania. Uh, so the match itself didn't do a lot for me. I'm sorry. It just didn't. Um, and it wasn't like terrible, but it just wasn't good either. So Asuka picks up the win, and there you go. Backstage, you get a, a New Day Vince McMahon bit. They're all waiting. Kofi's waiting outside McMahon's office. The New Day just walk in. They start talking about uh, Vinnie Mac needs to add Kofi to the triple threat. Uh, Vince McMahon says, okay, there's going to be a triple threat. And you two are barred from ringside. So Kofi goes to the ring, and they set up the punt fake with uh, Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan. They psyched that out, and it turns out to be a handicap match versus the bar. Now, this is where you really lose me as far as this pay-per-view goes. A, the shit doesn't make any sense with Vince McMahon and Kofi Kingston. It makes zero sense at all. There's no reason for him to have any beef with Kofi Kingston. There's no storyline. There's nothing to this other than all of a sudden Vince McMahon doesn't like Kofi Kingston. And... Okay, he took him out of the rest, uh, the world title picture. Didn't make sense. Now he's just kind of punishing him for some reason and throwing him in a handicap match versus the bar. It doesn't make any sense. And I get that they're probably doing this thing where Kofi Kingston's finally going to get a shot at WrestleMania. Yay! But nothing about this lands. Nothing makes sense. It It's, it's just weird and awkward. And... The match itself here, the New Day, 
uh, being barred from ringside, so you have Kofi Kingston in a handicap match with the bar. It was stupid. It was a waste of space. It was boring. Uh, the crowd was chanting, this is boring. So that was a clear message. Um, and it wasn't a we want Kofi thing. It was just, this is boring. That's all you heard during the match. And it, it was stupid. So I was not a fan of... Uh, you know, what can you say? The bar is going to go over. Um, after the match, Big E and uh, Xavier, they come down because the bar is just not stopping. They get cut off by Rusev and Nakamura. So all the new day get taken out. It, it just doesn't make sense. It's stupid. All of this is stupid. Charlie interviews Bailey and Sasha Banks. Bailey shows how bad she is at cutting promos and... That's about all you can say about it. Uh, Sasha Banks, I actually like the way she talks, her personality. You know, she can cut a promo. Uh, she has her hiccups here and there, no doubt. But overall, I like Sasha Banks' promo work. Uh, Bailey, she just doesn't have it. So backstage, they try to interview Shane O'Mac. He doesn't say anything close to the door. Then you get Ricochet and Aleister Black versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus The Revival. Uh, this was a much better match. Uh, I really liked the match itself. And I liked the way they went about it. You had a lot of good action in, all the way through this match. And uh, the Revival get the win. Get a clean win. And then Aleister Black and Ricochet, who kind of put themselves out by doing high risk and stuff, come back in the ring, take everybody else out. So you have the Revival. They keep the belts. They're heading to WrestleMania with the belts. And you have Ricochet and Aleister Black looking strong. So that's cool. I liked it. Oh, and um, during the match, I noticed one person had a fight, Trebek fight. I thought that was cool. Alex Trebek, you know, got stage four pancreatic cancer. So prognosis is never good with that. The mortality rate's pretty damn high. So I thought somebody, you know, having that sign was pretty cool. As a side note. After that, you have R-Truth versus Andrade Cien Almas versus Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe. Uh, again, this is another uh, pretty high-paced, high-octane match. A lot of very cool moves. A lot of unique stuff. Uh, Andrade and Ray trying to innovate, you can tell. These guys putting their heads together is magic in a ring. I think R-Truth and Samoa Joe both contributed quite a bit. So it was a good match all the way around. Uh, Samoa Joe does catch the win, so no problem there. He just got the U.S. belt. He's strong, he looks strong, he's a damn good promo guy. I mean, he deserves it. So there you go. Then you get Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Tamina and Nia Jax. I mean, I don't even really need to go into this. It wasn't that good because of who's in the match. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey, I like Tamina and Nia Jax. I do not. It was just pointless. Uh... At the end, Bailey gets a roll-up on Nia Jax, gets the win. Nia Jax and Tamina, obviously pissed off, going to start with the beatdown on Sasha Banks. Um, Beth Phoenix is doing commentary, and, you know, she's looking down at um, one of the, either Bailey or Sasha Banks, and then Tamina gets in her face. They start fighting. Nia blindsides her. Uh, hopefully she doesn't injure Beth Phoenix. And then Natalia comes down, and so Nia Jax and Tamina take out Sasha Banks, Bailey, Beth Phoenix, and Natalia. I can't stand it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, dude. I just, I cannot stand Nia Jax. There's nothing that says star about her. I don't know why in the fuck they keep pushing this woman. It, it is ridiculous on so many levels. She is just straight up garbage. Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali. Again, they kind of tease the Kofi Kingston third party. Turns out to be Mustafa Ali. Um, again, it does not make sense. It just doesn't. There, there is nothing about it that makes sense. Um, so you, you still have Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan, Mustafa Ali, which is found to be at least a good match, which it was. Um... At the end of the day, Eric Rowan gets involved quite a bit and causes Daniel Bryan to get the win. 
Then you have Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. This is a match that's been built up for a while. Um, and everybody was saying that they expected this to be a really good match. I don't know that it was as good as it could have been, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to cut this short by saying Ronda Rousey comes down, punches Becky Lynch in the stomach, which disqualifies Charlotte. Becky gets the win. She's going to WrestleMania. So Ronda intentionally gets Becky Lynch into the main event WrestleMania. And that's where you kind of leave off. Uh, Charlotte Flair looks pissed. Becky's happy because she understands what happened. And there you go. You close out the night with um, the Shield. Oh, wait. One quick segment before the Shield, though, was Elias. Uh, he had a bunch of little short sticks throughout the night where he was singing. And no interruptions. He finally gets interrupted. Lacey Evans comes down, does her walk, and goes back up the ramp, which is... Just mind-bafflingly dumb. Randy Orton, he hits the RKO out of nowhere on Elias while everybody's distracted with Lacey. AJ Styles shows up, pops up on the apron while Randy Orton's not looking, turns around and eats the elbow from AJ Styles. So then you go to the Shield, and they take on Lashley, Corbin, and McIntyre. Um, it was a really cool match. Uh, I... There is a certain magic with the Shield, I'll be honest. Like, there is something about these guys when they get going and they put their minds together and how they want to operate and do things in a match. Uh, it just really is cool. So there were a lot of cool spots in this match. Uh, one in particular was uh, they were all fighting kind of in the crowd. And there's this big open space in the crowd where they got some tables. And Dean Ambrose... Jumps off the table onto McIntyre, Bobby Lashley. They catch him, and then out of nowhere, like up above them in the crowd, is Seth Rollins. He jumps off onto those guys, wipes them all out. That was cool. Uh, they triple powerbomb McIntyre into one of the announce tables. Triple powerbomb Corbin in the ring. Roman Reigns gets the pin. There you go. Uh, they're saying it's the last time the Shield will be together. I honestly think they should have done a, a Shield thing for WrestleMania. I think that would have been really cool to see The Shield one last time at WrestleMania. But whatever. They're saying this is the last time we'll see The Shield together. It is what it is. So it was a very mixed bag. There were some things that I really did not like about this show and some things that I really did like about this show. Uh, the Shane Mac heel turn caught me by surprise. I liked it. I liked the uh, triple threat tag match. Uh, I liked the triple threat heavyweight championship match. The Shield match. Um, Charlotte and Becky was just kind of 50-50 for me. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Um, but at least we know that Becky Lynch is going, so that's cool. Um, and then you had, you know, kind of a throwaway match with Mandy Rose. I'm sorry, I just didn't, I didn't care for it that much. Um, the whole Kofi Kingston, Vince McMahon thing just did not make sense. Uh, there was a lot of wasted space in this pay-per-view regarding that. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey taking on Tamina and Nia Jax I didn't care about because I don't like Nia Jax or Tamina and you know it's not even so much Tamina uh, you know she's just kind of I mean age happens to everybody she's kind of getting bigger kind of getting older I mean it happens so it's not like it's a knock to Tamina it's got to be incredibly hard you know it gets harder and harder to do that uh, but as far as putting on a good match the ability has gone down but Nia Jax I just don't like period so, I mean, it really was a mixed, mixed bag. And because there were some things that I really liked and some endings that I really liked, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Um, otherwise, I would have called it right down the middle and give it a 5. But I did like some of the things they did with a couple of the matches. So, I think that's fair. I think 6 out of 10. It was slightly above average. There was a lot of things they could have done a lot better here. So, that's where I'm at with Fastlane. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. My name is Kevin Jackowitz, Cage Nation. Out.